so I'm going to ask you to think about there. It's below your belt button, okay? And all I want you to do is concentrate there. You don't have to look there, turn your head, whatever. Just think about right here. Then I'm going to just touch his sternum and then gently press. Very gently I'm pressing. And he has experience one. I'm not pressing hard, am I? Okay? And actually, you're very stable. Continue to think here. There's a tendency to think about the person pressing on your chest. Don't do that. Continue to think here. Very good. Now, I want you to stand the exact same way, but now think on the top of your head. On the very, very top of your head. Even if I touch your sternum again, continue to think on the top of your head. Exactly. Do you feel that? Okay, turn sideways so everyone can see. You have to watch very carefully. Okay, first he's thinking here, standing in the same exact way. I touch, I test. He's, he's a, have you done this before? You're really good. You're really good. If we go to Las Vegas, will you help me? Okay, okay, that's very good. Okay, now think up here and continue to think on the top of your head. Now you're thinking about my hand now. Think about the top of your head. Keep on the top, keep on the top, keep on the top. Yes. I barely even touch, and he has the feeling of wanting to, to move. Okay? But I want you to have that experience so that we can build upon it. Okay. The idea of your posture, we were just talking uh, on the side, is very important. I didn't finish my thought. Over time, if you roll your shoulders forward, and now those muscles are supporting the weight of your arms, and now you have chronically tense muscles back here, you just love a neck rub or a back rub. Who likes neck rub? <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> Um, so the idea is, when those muscles are tense, it's decreasing the blood flow through those muscles. And now your brain literally is getting less blood, less oxygen, so it'll be more, you'll have more of a tendency for dizziness, loss of balance, headaches, and you don't realize that you yourself can take responsibility for that by simply standing differently to help get rid of that chronic tension that's in the back. Okay, I want to now take it to one other level now, and I want you to now imagine another thing. Okay, you're going to test me, okay, and go ahead and <coughs> push really hard. I mean as hard as you can. You're pretty hard. Yeah, I'm really hard. <laughs> all this, all I'm going to show you, and I don't like to demonstrate things I can't teach you, but if you just have more confidence in keeping your mind here rather than letting it rise to the place of conflict, if my mind goes to where the conflict is, then I invite stress. But if I can really trust this idea of my center, even though he presses, go ahead press, and then gradually use, maybe even change your posture. Yeah. <laughs> So it kind, of, it, it kind of is amazing that, well, he's just standing there and it doesn't seem to matter. What's happening is if I'm just calm, I can receive his power. And rather than pushing back in a tit-for-tat way, I'm just redirecting it down here to my one point and just kind of letting it dissipate. Because the upper half of my body is very calm. So here's the, the reason why. Do you think when you're, if you stay right here, you're helping me. If, I, if you're thinking, if you're under stress, do you think your mind is more likely to be up here or down here? If I'm under stress, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, it's up here. So what we don't realize is the simplest physical cue. When you're under stress, everything tends to come up. And when you're under stress, you also tend to get tunnel vision, which is also not good if you're the quarterback or the point guard or anyone who has to see the whole field or in danger <coughs> party you want to see the whole field. So learning how to manage stress, balance yourself, is key to everyone's performance and I think happiness in daily life, just to function to the best of your ability. So I'm giving you more confidence now because what I'm going to ask you to do is rather than seeing your partner as a threat, I'm going to ask you to hold your partner's hand and just put it on your chest. This is like, you know, peace be with you at church, right? <laughs> right? This is just a nice experience. And so I want you to touch and let your your partner press with greater pressure. Go ahead. But the fact is, I want you to just touch them <coughs> to make a connection. And actually, I'm going to imagine I'm an animal with four legs. So two of my legs are right there. The other two are the ones that I normally walk under. 
And just by touching, I'm imagining that I'm just the same animal, the same being. And you see, the reason why when I imagine that way, I stop the conflict. Because why would I push against the other half of myself? So this is a mental image of truly becoming one with the other person. So I can do it. It helps me to just touch, or it helps beginners to touch. So you go ahead and push. Gradually increase the pressure. But the reason why I'm not fighting back is I'm thinking I'm the same person. In fact, his weight's going back, but I'm not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we can have, we, we can have um, all kinds of... Well, can I borrow you again? Because you were great. <laughs> he was really solid. Okay, but I'm going to explain something to you. And he, I know he's got a good sense of humor, so this will work. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do what we just did. Okay, you don't even need to touch me, but he did it so well. Okay, I'm, I'm pushing, and I mean I'm pushing hard right now. Okay, okay, but now I'm going to say, please walk forward. Can you? Okay, <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Please walk forward. Okay, difficult. Okay, but now you do me. Yeah, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, you're going to push. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then you say, please walk forward. Please walk forward. Okay. All the training. All the training. Yes, all the training. Yeah, it's all training. Well, my, my, you know, my goal is to help you with the same thing. We just don't have time. I just wanted to demonstrate something. Everyone would have done what you did. But I want to teach you what happened to your mind. You were doing this so wonderfully, I was training you, I was pushing really hard, which is why I did it with you, because you were solid as could be. But as soon as I say, walk forward, his mind changed. His mind changed from just what I call keeping one point. His mind naturally, intuitively, went straight, went right into the point of attack. Okay, so in other words, if I, my hand, imagine I was just standing here, I'm you, and you even did this. In other words, your mind went from here right into my hand, which is the exact opposite of what you want to do when you meet a conflict. So the only reason why I walked forward is I realized he's not holding my hips, legs, and my whole body. Well, he just has his hand on my sternum. So I'm going to walk forward from the same place I was just thinking, and suddenly it's impossible to hold me. But see, that, that's, that's, how, that's how the martial art of Aikido works. You don't move right where the person has you, you move from the place where you're not being held. You actually respect the attacker and move from someplace else. But what do you need to do to be able to do that? Be calm enough in a stressful situation, like someone's attacking or kicking or whatever, so that you can actually, it's almost as if you're seeing the other person in slow motion. And it all comes from basic mental training. I'm going to ask you to now sit in the same way um, that I was just... Oh, look, you're already doing it. How did you know? You notice because sitting like this is the same as standing like this on your heels. So at home, if you want to practice this, and I hope you will, this stool is too high for me. What you want is to sit in a chair. This is getting to your question. Sit in a chair where your legs are at perfect right angles. In other words, the height of your chair needs to be such that... You're not sitting, for example, if, my, if I'm very tall and my chair is too short, you know, imagine I'm sitting like this. If I'm on a stool that's too high, like this, notice this is not right angles. What you want is pretty much a chair like you have because the weight of your body from your seat underneath your hamstrings wants to be distributed over the greatest surface area. So if, if you're sitting in a chair that's too small, there's too much weight going right on your butt. <coughs> if, this, if the chair is too short, you don't have your feet firmly planted on the floor. All this is just basic physics that can really help you get started in a, in a positive way. Okay, so now you don't want to lean back on the chair. Now you're going to lean it forward as though you're standing on your toes and over your center. So now you're going to sit forward so that the small of your back so that the small of your back is away from the chair. So this is no different than if I'm standing in a centered position to sitting in a centered position. Okay? You with me? Okay. 
So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to inhale through the nose. I'm going to keep these very short. That is the breath length, very short. And then we're going to exhale through your mouth, and we're going to make the sound of A-H. That is, ah. Uh. 